Yeah. Okay, so our guest uh, today is Mark here, the Vice President for Open Source Sales and Marketing Institute at Microsoft. Hello, Mark, thank you for having to talk with us. And uh, do you have something to tell us at the start? Because we have just finished the breakfast and how was it? Yeah, uh, um, I thought the breakfast was very good. Uh, we had uh, a number of uh, members of the press there. We had a uh, community from the open source community. Uh, and so we had a good discussion about Microsoft and open source. And uh, there's so much going on at our business around open source that uh, it was a rich discussion this morning. So I thought it was, uh, I enjoyed it very much. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with our questions. Uh, uh, can you tell our leaders uh, what are you doing now in Microsoft and what were you doing before it? Yeah, I've been at Microsoft for uh, over 23 years, uh, doing various uh, in various capacities. I've been uh, part of uh, managing uh, various regions in the world. Uh, I've been at our corporate headquarters in different staff functions. Uh, I've been in the enterprise business, and uh, more recently, I was asked to run our. our open source sales and marketing parts of the business uh, and you know as we uh, as the company is changing at Microsoft we're uh, a, 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 you know we're becoming a, a cloud platform provider uh, as our primary business and when we do that we need to provide services to customers uh, for all kinds of computing that they, that they do uh, whether it's traditional Microsoft products whether it's our competitive products like uh, like Oracle for example or SAP uh, or whether it's open source solutions and so our platform has to be able to run all of the environments and uh, my role is to make sure that our company is able to help partners and customers uh, understand how to run open source uh, solutions on the Microsoft platform. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, could you tell us more about the Microsoft Openness? Uh, what is the main task of this department? Yeah, so uh, the main task of, of uh, my part of the business is to, is to uh, firstly train the Microsoft sellers around the world, the sales, marketing and services people that live in every country around the world, uh, to train them uh, on what does Microsoft provide on our uh, Azure platform and our, our, our private cloud platform? Uh, how can we support open source solutions and what are, you know, what are open source solutions that customers use? And then uh, to help them talk to our partners and then to help them talk to our customers. Uh, and so my job is to help evangelize what it is that we're doing, why we're doing it, and train people on how to go and actually meet customers' needs and solve customers' problems. And so it's a um, it's a task. It's uh, we're not trying to. Uh, in my business, isn't something that uh, does the open discussion with customers ourselves. We're just trying to help the general Microsoft sales force do that. Okay. Uh, how many people are involved with Microsoft Openness? Uh, we know that Microsoft reduced the number of employees uh, at the in initiative of Openness. How the full this initiative will be developed in the future? Yeah, I don't think we're reducing the number of employees in openness at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, instead of having a separate initiative as openness, uh, everyone needs to be able to talk about openness, not just a few people called the Microsoft openness people. So across our business, both at an engineering level and in sales and marketing, it's more about getting the regular people to talk about open. And so our job, we, we, we are putting new leads in every subsidiary around the world. So in Poland here and in every subsidiary around the world there's one person that's the open source lead it's a new role we created called the open source lead to to help train everyone on, on open source and you know after a period of time uh, you know when everybody is trained and all customers know what we do we that we probably don't need that role anymore but for now we do need it while we while we try and train our partners and our customers what we're doing on open source okay uh, can you tell me what do you think about the com community gathered around openness and maybe you know how many Polish people are involved so uh, you know the you, you talk about the open source community in Poland? Uh, no, that uh, community that is gathered around Microsoft Openness in general. So it really includes the open source community. Okay. 
So, um, you know, uh, today, uh, around the world, uh, about 23% uh, of all of the processing that happens on Azure comes from a Linux operating system. So, uh, about a quarter of everything that happens on Azure already uh, is from, a, a, at least from a Linux operating system point of view, you could say is open source. But in Poland, it's even higher, it's in the mid 30s. So when you look at the Polish users of, of Azure, about 34% of all processing comes from Linux. And so it's higher than the world average. And, you know, because there's a big developer community here in Poland. It's a very respected community. And, um, and so there's a large open source community as well in Poland. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sh I don't know the details of exactly how many open source developers and practitioners there are in Poland, but, uh, you know, at Microsoft our job is to go and show all of them how to use Azure as a, as a platform to run their business or, or run their solutions. And, uh, you know, we're, we're investing in that here. We're, uh, in, that's why we're here, that's why I'm visiting here, to try and help, uh, you know, we work with members of the press, work with customers, work with partners, and also our own staff to train all of the people at Microsoft how to have this discussion. So it's not just me talking about openness. Okay. A few months ago, Microsoft had some .NET Core wrap library. What was the reason for that decision, and couldn't uh, it be taken a bit earlier? Uh, well, uh, so recently we uh, we open sourced the, the .NET Core, the .NET libraries, the Roslyn compiler. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, .NET technologies we've put in. We've created the .NET Foundation, and uh, the reason we did that was because we wanted. Uh, uh, we thought it was a good idea to to have the the .NET environment be available on non Microsoft platforms. It gives .NET programmers the ability to build solutions, not just targeting a Windows platform, but to target Linux and other platforms as well. So it gives them a, a much broader uh, uh, platform to then build solutions for. And I think it's a good idea because um, uh, you know it's, uh, it helps uh, it, 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 it helps developers who are building software have a much wider uh, a much wider platform to sell their solutions. And um, you know, could it been done earlier? You know, uh, I would say uh, perhaps, you know, as uh, when you look at, you know, I think the cloud, the advent of cloud made a big difference. All of a sudden, it changed the model that we have in the world today of how computing works. And so it, it, it made a lot more sense for us to have a uh, .NET available on all these other platforms. But that's a large part of the driver for what we're doing around openness is the cloud is a great leveler. You know, it doesn't matter whether the solution is built in a commercial model or open source model. In a cloud, it's still a cloud service. A customer pays for that cloud service based on the functionality of the service, regardless of whether it's built in an open source or a commercial model. Yeah, uh, property of the cloud did change the rules of the game. Yeah, it's changed the rules of the game a lot, yeah. Okay, uh, how developers uh, receive the news about raising the .NET Core? Yeah, it's been... Uh, I think developers have been very uh, uh, excited about the news. Uh, certainly anybody who builds uh, .NET solutions is, is happy because they've got a much bigger platform to build solutions for. Um, uh, you know, if you look at uh, people that uh, were not .NET developers in the past, I'm not sure whether they will or not start using .NET because it's available on other platforms and I think that's for them to decide. Uh, but I, I don't think there's, uh, I think it's a good thing. The community has been uh, positive about it, whether it's a .NET community or the non-.NET community. Uh, I mean, who can say anything bad about it? You know? yeah. So I think it's been, been yeah, it's been well received I think. Yeah, uh, do you think that raising of the .NET code will accelerate the uh, growth and evolution of the code and subsidiary programs? Yeah, well, I definitely think you'll start seeing um, uh, the .NET environment available on more platforms built by by the community, not just Microsoft. And, you know, we'll, we'll continue to invest invest in that heavily. We're not stopping to invest in .NET. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think you'll see more variants. You'll see it available on more platforms. So uh, I think it will continue. Uh, you know, whether it will speed, I think it will certainly speed up because there's more people being involved in it. Uh, which is good for the community, good for customers. So, 
Yeah, especially for the customers. Well, yeah, well. that's at the end of the day, it's all about customers, yeah. quite frankly. Okay, um, in the web, there is an information from Mark Ruzinovich, who is acting as a Microsoft Technical Fellow. Yeah, uh, Mark Ruzinovich, yeah. yeah. That is planned to release some of the Windows code. Can you refer to it? I know we have spoke about uh, at the breakfast, but could you repeat? Uh, the part? We, we don't, uh, I'm not aware of any plans that we have to release any Windows code as open source. Uh, you know, we've got to look at the business model. There's been no discussion of that that I've been aware of. Uh, you know, Mark Rasilovich is a, a very highly regarded uh, expert at Microsoft, and he's a very learned fellow. Uh, and, you know, uh, I would say uh, he's very knowledgeable about what we're doing. And he's, uh, uh, you know, there are clearly parts of what we do in our business. A lot of what we do in our business is open source today, a huge amount. And so I wouldn't be surprised if there's aspects of Windows that is an open source uh, uh, model in the future. But, the, you know, the, the core Windows business, uh, I don't know of any, uh, of any decision to make that open source. Yeah. But I think, you know, when, it, when, when Mark talks about this, he's probably talking about the, f the philosophy of Microsoft. And the philosophy is to, is, is to not write a line of code that's already been written. The philosophy is to make our products interoperable and uh, available on many platforms. That's why you see we're doing a lot of effort to put uh, all of our office products on iOS, on Android, on multiple devices. You see more and more of our software available on every different platform. You see all different platforms available on Azure. So we clearly are, are doing that as a, as a business practice. So, you know, who knows what will happen in the future. Right now, there's no plans that I know of that have anything to do with open sourcing methods. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so can you tell us how the way of thinking did change over the years uh, in regards of open source in Microsoft? Yeah, so it's a, it's a good question, you know. Uh, and uh, one of the questions that you and I spoke about as well is this, this company that uh, Microsoft used to have, a, a company called MS OpenTech, yeah. which was a separate subsidiary, uh, a separate legal entity that Microsoft had, which worked with open source solutions in the past. And we've since closed that business and brought it back into Microsoft. And I, I, I mention that because it's, it's, uh, it's an example of what's happening at Microsoft. You know, uh, at Microsoft we build a uh, platform uh, and services for customers and those services could be of any technology. And so whether it's Microsoft, uh, traditional technology competitors or open source, we've got to provide what customers want as a, on our platform. And so everyone at Microsoft needs to look at open source, not a separate little group. Everyone, every seller at Microsoft has to be talking about open source solutions, not just a, a small group like mine called Openness. And so it's become a mainstream at Microsoft in engineering, and that's why uh, if you look at uh, all of the work we're doing in engineering, every developer at Microsoft is responsible for thinking about where they use open source software, where do they use normal Microsoft commercial software. And, Everybody is able to contribute to open source solutions. As a matter of fact, the new mission of MS OpenTech is to help our thousands and thousands of developers at Microsoft be able to use and contribute to open source code. It's their job to help. They're like a program office to help. Uh, they've built a, a portal and they've built a, uh, systems that help our developers actually use and contribute back to open source projects. So it's everybody's job now, not a separate group. And that's a big change at Microsoft. It's a yeah, huge change. A big change for the people. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you assess the current activities of Microsoft in terms of involvement in open source? Yeah. So uh, you can assess our, uh, our activity with open source in a number of ways. We can start off at an, at an engineering level where we build our products. And if you look at all of the announcements we've made over the last year, uh, how many of them have to do with open source? So uh, the, the announcements we make around uh, uh, our acquisitions we're doing, uh, you know, uh, acquiring software that allows us to do machine learning or R, for example. If you look at the, uh, uh, the announcements we've done around Docker, uh, around, uh, uh, you know, creating uh, containerization, what we've done in Windows Server containerization, if you look at uh, you know 
many of the new features that we've announced, if you look at our big data solutions or uh, our Microsoft HD Insight, which is a uh, Hadoop service based on, on Azure, and there's a Windows version of that, and you can also get a, a Linux version of it. So most of the new announcements we're doing around uh, our platform is around open source. So that's the first way to look at it. Second way is to look at just customer usage. You know, I mentioned earlier that we have about 23% of all of the Azure core VM hours are running a Linux operating system, and that's being increased from zero two years ago. So that's a big, customers are deciding when they, to use Azure, not just for their Windows solutions, but also for their, their Linux and open source solutions. And also, if you just look at the amount of uh, sales and marketing work we do with customers and the requests we're getting from customers, so that's why, you know, so across engineering, across looking at customer usage and uh, to predict future customer usage by looking at what customer requests are, we've seen a big increase in customers using Azure for, for open source. So it's, a, it's rapidly increasing. Yeah. Okay, uh, Microsoft has its own code, uh, code, uh, code flex. Uh, what would be the future of it as most of the code is now being pushed to the key? Yeah, so you know, the, the, the codeplex was a forge like GitHub uh, and it was created ooh, 10 years ago or so, uh, I think uh, 10 or 12 years ago to do open source uh, work with uh, Microsoft on uh, Microsoft platforms and um, I mean that still exists and it continues to exist and uh, uh, there's a lot of work happening on, uh, on Git uh, and you know, I think all of them will continue to support and you know, I think developers and customers will choose where they want to go. Oh, uh, that's nice. that's and I think cool. that's just good. You know, it's, we'll we'll go we we'll go where customers want to go. We we'll go where developers want to go. You know, so okay. it's it's in our best interests. So we will, you, know. you will go with the flow. Well, I wouldn't say go with the flow. We'll go with where it makes a lot of business sense. You okay. know, that might be with the flow, and uh, yeah. clearly. Uh, Customers want us to make our own decisions, not just go with the flow. But uh, that I agree with you. If the flow is going uh, in one direction, we gotta we gotta say, hey, that's where the business is going. We should go there too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from the announcements, we know about the closure of the op uh, Microsoft Open Tech that is spoke yeah. already, and people uh, are returning to the corporation. Yeah. Uh, does this mean that open source will become the equivalent of business direction for Microsoft? Yeah, it's um, it's worth it's a good discussion topic. Um, you know, I don't think you can by any uh, shape or, or, or way talk about Microsoft. Uh, you know, we, we will develop products using an open source uh, method. We'll continue to build commercial software. Uh, so I, you know, it's it's uh, and we will choose the the kind of model that we need to use and a blend of the two that makes the most sense. And so, you know, you, if you say Microsoft is an open source company, yep. Is Microsoft a commercial vendor? Yep. You know, we will, yes to all of those questions. Uh, I think just like any large uh, software and services company today, you, uh, whether it's open source or whether it's commercial software, it's whatever makes the most sense for customers is what we will do. Uh, and I think this, this sort of, uh, you know, this orthogonal approach that we've had between open source and Microsoft, that is a kind of a thing. It's an irrelevant thing in the cloud. You know, and it's about value to customers at the end of the day, which I think is what we're all about. Okay, uh, what are, how do you think it will affect the numbers uh, of open source projects from Microsoft? Uh, oh, yeah. And whether in this situation uh, these changes will be maintained at the VM Depot? Yeah, so we Without a doubt, the number of open source projects that Microsoft contribute to, the number of open source lines of code that Microsoft employees create, there's a massive increase in that. Massive, massive increase in that. You know, we're very large contributors to uh, to very big open source projects, the Linux kernel, the uh, you know, many different open source uh, uh, projects uh, Microsoft are huge contributors to. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. Um, and so um, uh, it's on the increase, definitely on the increase as we do more and more services around open source solutions on Azure. So I don't think it's going to, uh, you know, it, it'll only increase as we do more and more work around open source. Okay, so the cloud will be 
be, ben be beneficial to the open source or, or project from Microsoft? Yes, I think so. It's, it changes the model and it creates a... It's also the Microsoft mission. We've changed from being a company that delivers on-premises uh, intellectual property, which by nature is orthogonal to open source okay, uh, uh, principles, to we've changed our business to being a, a cloud provider. And that's not orthogonal to providing open source solutions. So it's natural for us to to go through uh, a, a much more deeper embrace of open source solutions. It's, it's what our new business model is. And you know these things you will see, the second part of your question was, will we see these things in VM Depot? Yeah. Absolutely. If you look at VM Depot today, it's got over 3,000 objects in it and it will continue to, to uh, 3,000 elements, it will continue to increase dramatically. Um, and it's not just VM Depot, it's also the Azure Gallery, it's the you know, Microsoft, we, it's not just third parties bringing out open source solutions on Azure, it's Microsoft ourselves too. So the, you know, raw Azure services that will be based on open source solutions will continue to increase. Uh, and what about the future uh, for the open source technology center? So, uh, the open source technology center is, uh, it's a, a group within Microsoft that focuses on um, on making sure that all the standards that exist in uh, in uh, all the open standards are brought and implemented into Microsoft products, so that is a is a is a vital vital part of our business uh, for us to deliver on the inter interoperability promise that we have for customers. We've got to make sure we implement all these standards, and so the OSTC or the Open Source Technology Center that we have uh, continues. That's a it's a well-funded group, and it's a it's a key key part of our business. Yeah. They're the ones that make sure that anything we create uh, is uh, interoperable, and also that when new standards arrive, that we can contribute to them, you know, so that they they work perfectly in the Microsoft world. Okay, and let's jump to the Skype because it was merged with the links as Skype for Business and incorporated into the Office product. What, what will happen with the Skype for Linux? So, yeah, Skype, um, we acquired Skype many years ago, and uh, we also had our own uh, commercial uh, for businesses. We had a, a, a product called Link. And yeah. so, what we've done now is we've renamed the commercial product Link to Skype for Business and merged the two businesses together. So, we get a consumer version uh, and then also a commercial version. And both of those products are now in the broader office group. And so, just like uh, you know, just like any of our other products, if you look at Office itself, we built a version of Office uh, for iOS and for Android, and it's in those two stores. We have, uh, you know, we'll continue to provide uh, our Office products, including Skype, for for all platforms that are popular with customers. So that shouldn't change anything in our, um, in you know, if there's a customer demand, hey, we should go and provide the. Uh, the, the, the service and you know we're, we're about providing uh, customers with a with a services and solutions for their business if it happens if customers want it on Linux we'll provide it on Linux if they want it on Android we'll provide it on Android we're about providing those services it's, it's not just about a, a platform yeah. Okay, so I think that it's uh, uh, easy for some of our readers that use the yes. Skype yes. on Linux Okay, uh, we have, well, you have mentioned already a few times about Azure, and we were wondering, because on Azure we got CZ, we got CentOS, but what about the leading business distribution from Red Hat? Yeah, we, you know, our, our uh, intent is to have uh, all popular distributions of Linux and, and any other platform, as a matter of fact, uh, available on Azure for customers to use. And I can tell you that we are working uh, very, very hard uh, uh, at all levels with Red Hat to make sure that we can support Red Hat in the near future. Uh, I can't uh, give you any more information than that, but I promise you both companies are working really, really hard to make that happen. Okay, so we two will be able to sooner or later. We are make, working very hard to make that happen, yes. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a very popular customer request. 
yeah. to both ourselves and to Red Hat. So that's why we're both working so hard to make it happen. Okay, that was our last question. Thank you for your time. Thank you for agreeing to speak with us and, uh, and our readers. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the staying in the Poland for the I know it was, it, it will be two days in total. Yes, yes. Uh, well, thank you very much. I must say it's, it's been interesting uh, talking to you, not just in the interview, but also at the breakfast and at the other events. It's been a good stay here. I've enjoyed it very much and I hope to be back soon. Okay. Thank you and hope we'll see soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank for you. For all sports and the